but he lunged at me and I missed the hilt of the knife. So I held the blade instead. Um, and so I held it firmly and he couldn't pull it out. Um, and you know, he was struggling. Um, then the second person came in and was coming at me with his own knife. And again, I missed the hilt and held both blades in my hands. So we were struggling um, with the blades. They were trying to pull it out. They couldn't pull it. Um, and then at some point, they both forcefully pulled it out and cut my palms. Um, at that point, I felt the pain. Mm. I was like... Do you still believe in miracles? Do you believe that God still does the impossible, even in our time? Today, we join the Ezra Ajania family as they share with us their testimony of God's faithfulness. Welcome to this episode of Unworld. As always, we're excited to have you join us as we have conversations about what God is doing in our time as young people. Welcome to Unworld. Thank you so much for you know, sharing and allowing to us to come in to share your testimony. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you please introduce yourselves? Okay. Um, I'm Ezra Majanya, and this is my wife, um, Sharon Majanya. Um, All right. Uh, so we will just go straight into into it. Just tell us tell us the story. Tell us what happened. Okay. Um, it feels surreal, but. Um, it feels like telling someone else's story. Um, but it was in last year, 2022, um, in October, um, to be precise, the 28th of, mm -hmm. of October. Um, like any other day, um, we went to bed and at about 3.30, um, and the early hours of, of the morning, I heard um, some noise be behind our window. And I got out of bed and um, went to the window to, to try and understand what was going on. Um, and I noticed the pedestrian gate to the compound was, was open. And I saw um, our neighbor um, with some individuals so they were walking towards the gate and at first i didn't think it was strange because um he leaves the house um very early sometimes as because of of work but then i was wondering um even if he was leaving for work why was the pedestrian gate open and who were these people so i noticed that they were not actually walking out of the gate but um, they made towards his own apartment. So he stays on, on, on the ground floor. It has four flats. The building has four flats and we are on, in one apartment on the ground floor and they are in the other apartment. So I noticed that they were making to their front door. So I went out of the room, our bedroom, and went into the parlor to try and understand what was going on. And they stood not too far away from the living room window but i couldn't make out what they were saying um at that point i picked my phone and called a friend um, who lives and a friend and our neighbor who lives directly behind us to tell him um i think we have armed robbers in the house um i don't know why i assumed he would he pick up but i called him and he picked up at at that time so I told him, I said, Donwa, um, I think there are armed robbers in the house. And he was like, how are you sure? I said, um, well, I'm not sure, but the vibe I'm getting is, this is not normal. Um, and then as we were talking, I noticed that um, they now pushed, well, not necessarily pushed. I saw my, my neighbor walk to the back of the house and the two guys who were with him followed him. And then after a few minutes, one of them ran out, ran from the back of the house through the 
the main gate. Before then, I had tried to call the security guard because in all this, he was nowhere around. The gate was open. So I called twice and he didn't pick up. So I was wondering where, where has this guy kept his phone and see, see high and passed out. So I noticed one of the persons ran out of the gate and went and picked up his stone. So I knew, okay, okay. These guys have confirmed my, my fears. They are actually armed robbers. So he picked up this stone and made towards our own apartment. Um, we have, we constructed, and this was my wife's um, intentions. We constructed, like, I won't call it a security door, but there was like a door, um, like a net. So they couldn't gain access to uh, our flat through the door. So, and I don't think they intended to go through the door. It would have been difficult. So he went to the window. Coincidentally, that night, for some reason, we didn't close our windows. We, we left them open, which is strange. We would normally not do that. We left them, left them open. So he had free access, um, to the windows and he took out, to picked up this stone. And I was just looking to see what he had on him. I noticed he had knives. So I was like, okay, he has knives. Picked up the stone and he hit the burglary at an angle. And I, he did that just twice and the burglary gave way. So in my mind, I said, so the burglary was actually useless. Um, hitting it twice and it's giving way. But the thing is, it gave way. Um, but then we have these very heavy curtains. Um, and, and, and just after the curtains, we have the chairs, the, the sitter. So the burglary didn't fall in completely. It, the, the curtains held it back. And so he, it's, even though the window was open, he didn't have free access to, to come in. Uh, through all this, I was having conversations with my friend to say, he asked me, what do you think? And my eyes was told him, I told him, okay, I don't have access to, to security personnel, but you live with your landlord, so he will know security personnel and he can probably, you can alert him so that he lets them, lets them know. While we were having that conversation, the guy comes in. And I think um, the surprise of seeing someone mm -hmm. in the living room startled him. So as he was coming in, he saw me, he made to, to, to stab me with his knife. I said, okay, um, before then I had looked around the house to say, I, I don't have any weapons to defend myself. But I checked, okay, knives, we'll, we'll, I'll disable you and, and get the, the weapons. Um, but he launched at me and I missed the hilt of the knife. So I held the blade instead. Um, and so I held it firmly and he couldn't pull it out. Um, and you know, he was struggling. Um, then the second person came in and was coming at me with his own knife. And again, I missed the hilt and held both blades in my hands. So we were struggling, um, with the blades. They were trying to pull it out. They couldn't pull it. Um, and then at some point they both forcefully pulled it out and cut my palms. Um, at that point I felt the pain. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, no, I've been cut deep, but my mind wasn't thinking about yeah. the pain. There's, there's this adrenaline rush. Um, so I fell back on the chair, um, by the window, <laughs> funny enough, by the window where they came. So I fell back on the chair and they both came trying to stab me. But for some reason they were not, I knew I could feel cuts and, and all that, but it wasn't, they weren't getting the target like they intended. And, you know, they were saying, and they were saying this in, in Hausa, we're going to kill you, we're going to kill you. All this while my friend was hearing the struggle and all that and all they were saying. So immediately they, they pulled out the knives from my, from my palms and I fell back. The first guy who came in, um, who was shorter, said, where the phone, where the phone, where the phone? So I think he noticed it fell on one of these couches. And so he picked it up and immediately caught it. Um, and then they came back trying to, to, they couldn't. 
and then I was able to get up and 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 so we were standing and looking at each other. So immediately I got up, they paused and they were like, they were like, where the money, where the money? I said, there's no money in the house. Um, you have my phone. If you want money, I can transfer. Uh, so I'm like, where your laptop? Where your laptop? I didn't mention that I had laptops or, or we had laptops in the house. Then they, they now said, where your wife? Where your wife? Um, at that point, I was like, okay, no. One, I truly don't have money. Um, I know they are laptops, but I won't tell you where the laptops are. Um, but now you're asking for my wife. Ah, I don't want you to see my family and then think you use my family to get money from me um, that I actually don't have, but you will not believe I don't have it in my mind. I was like, do you know whether I will ask you to borrow me money myself? <laughs> 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 so, but with all the struggles, we had um, destabilized the parlor. So the arrangements of the chairs had, 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 had moved about. And these two chairs that sit side by side had moved in a way that we had this little corridor that leads to our bedrooms. We were living in a two bedroom flat. And so there's a little corridor into the two bedrooms. So the, the chairs had moved in a way that were already blocking. Mm. And with all they were saying and not getting a response that they wanted from me, they were like, we're going to kill you. You know, at that point I stood, I was thinking, I was like, okay, um, there are two of you, um, one of me, you both have knives, I'm weaponless. But you can't, something, you people have not overpowered me. And you know, um, even though it for that was what I was thinking, and later on I just, I just figured that it was just God staying in their hands. Mm. Because in my mind I was like, if I was in your position, both of you would probably be dead. Because, or you would be in serious pain. Because my intent would be to harm you very well with what, what I have. But my mom was like, this is, there's some confusion in their miss mm -hmm, yeah. not to achieve what, what they, yeah. they set out to do. So in all that discussion, I was, when they started saying, where's your wife? I started backing towards the corridor to try and mm -hmm. get, and we have this shelf. I think it's, it's as long as those two shelves together and slightly higher or probably the same height. My wife had bought it for business that didn't work out and she was not happy about, <laughs> <laughs> about it. So, um, unbeknownst to us, God made us buy something that would protect mm -hmm. us many months later. And it's quite a heavy shelf. I mean, when we were moving into this house, I think like three or four of us mm -hmm. had to carry the shelf. <laughs> and at that point, when this guy asked me, I, I just moved and I pulled, pulled the entire shelf across that little, little corridor. At that point, they both rushed, but the shelf was already there. And these two chairs, these two couches were in front were in front of jail. So they had to climb the shelves, the chairs to try and get to me. Now, um, the shelf is very close to the roof, to the ceiling. So they didn't have the access, but for some way they managed, they were pushing and the chair, the shelf would push them back, but they were still trying to stab me, stab me at that point. Um, it was at that point as we were struggling and all, um, I had her screaming, shouting for help and, and saying, help, help, I'm robbers, I help, help. Now we have a li living nanny. We used to have a living nanny because she stays in the second room. And my fear at that point was if, if I go into our room and barricade us in, um, and they open, they're able to pull out the shelf. They'll probably, they will go in and I don't know what they will do to her. Um, and she's a lady, so she'll probably be, she, I knew she would definitely be helpless. So my mom was thinking, 
um, let me go in and tell my wife to call her to tell her to push because there was also a cupboard in her room to push the cupboard across her own her own door. While I was doing all that calculation in my mind, I felt this trust hit me on my shoulder. Um, so I knew one of them trust his, his, his knives and it hit me on the shoulder. At that point, I became winded. I just felt like, okay, this is a critical hit. I felt weak immediately. I, I even fell back a bit before I, I, at that point, I said, no, I have to go in this, this shelf. Let it be there. If they pull it down, let them all come in. God, please protect mm. the lady in the other room. So I ran, into, I opened it or got into the room. And then we have this shoe rack just by our door and I pulled it across. I closed it up, pulled it across. And she was, she was shouting, help, help, help. At that point, again, another testimony for me. Armed robbers who had entered the house, went out of the house through the window, they came in. They didn't go out, they didn't open the door to go out. They went out through the window, they came in and went to our bedroom window, took the, the stones they had used to break in, to break in through our window to come in. Um, now we have a dresser across that window and then there's a, so when they hit, and the, the burglary again, very unreliable burglary, um, bro, just broke, gave way with two hits. But because there was a dressing table, it hit the dressing table and, and there was very little space to, for them to, 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 to come in. But I was still there trying to, to push it back. Um, the dresser, which was also beside it, also obstructed it, and they were trying to, at that point, she was shouting, help, help, help. Um, and then, um, I think we started, we heard, um, the car, um, the car. car alarm, and I knew it was my friend's car alarm going, going on. So at that point, I was like, ah. in my mind, I was like, definitely people will come now. Um, ah. with the way she's even shouting, surely. Um, help, will come. help will help will come, but they kept on struggling, and it was it was like back and forth, back and forth, um, and then I think it was at that point we had a gunshot. Gun shot. So we had the first gunshot, and I think they just figured, you know what, um, if we stay here, they will actually catch us. So they now ran out of the gate. Um, I, like, at least I saw them run out of the gate, but I wasn't sure. I said, okay, now them running out of the gate, is it because they are going to go and reinforce mm -hmm. and come back? Are they going to bring more people to sort this, this out? So I stood there for a bit and they didn't come. So I now told her, I told my wife, um, that, um, I've been stabbed. So she said, then just lie down, just lie down. So I told her, please, can I get something to, to um, apply pressure. Apply pressure. So I, I'll just cut you a little bit. We'll come back to that end. But I want to hear from you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. When all of this was going on and you were in the room, you know, screaming for help, what, what was it like for you? What was going through your mind? What were you doing <laughs> apart from screaming? <laughs> you know, I just want to hear a bit of your experience. Yeah, it's... I mean, just hearing him talk about it, it's, it's bringing back memories of that night from what I heard. I couldn't really go out to help him, but I knew something terrible was going on with the kind of, and then I could hear more food sounds. The first thing I could do, I knew at our office, they had told us about minimizing risks as much as possible. So the first thing I wanted to do was how to take our son out of the equation. But I looked left and right, there was no access door. The only access door into the room was the where, you know, the commotion was going on. I was tempted to take him into the bathroom, to hide him there, to just somehow take him out of, you know. Was he awake? He was asleep. He was actually fast asleep, but he could feel like something was used mm -hmm. in and out of sleep. And I was trying to call for help. My hands were shaking. Eventually I called for help. I called like two of my colleagues. I still called our neighbor, which um, he had called earlier on. Um, and in all of that chaos, 
I, I think that is the most helpless I've ever felt in my life. Knowing that you cannot do anything. At the point, I remember having an image in my head. I don't know what I would see behind the door. I don't know. Mm. If the door swings open, I don't know who I would see. So I was quite helpless and I was feeling like, what can I do? But the moment I heard the door open and I turned around and I saw him coming into the room and he was bleeding from his chest down. I just knew, see, I could scream. I, I, that's all I could just think of doing. Just scream, call for help. Anybody that helps you, I mean, that's the best you can do right now. It was quite terrifying. It was quite frightening. Just relieving everything. I tried to get him because he was still in his, you know, he started getting disoriented. Mm -hmm. He was still trying to look out to the window. They were still coming in through the window. Our son was trying to hold him. I was trying to take him away. It was just, it was just too much going on. I just kept saying, Holy Spirit, please help us, help us, help us. I just, somehow I was trying to find some peace in, mm -hmm. if I could say that in the midst of all of this storm. And, you know, after the, you know, the gunshots, the car alarm going off, then I heard a familiar voice. I heard our neighbor had come around. Somehow within the time had passed and somehow help came. But it was, it was quite, I, I can't even begin to describe how it felt. Um, but he had to, you know, ensure that he was at least lying down be able to, you know, contain because he was losing so much blood. Um, and then I were able to then open the door. I was able to carry my son and take him out and then open the door for help to come. Yeah, but all in all, I would say um, there is nothing that describes that moment, really. But we just thank God because of all the confusion that was going on around all of these intruders when they were trying to break it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a lot yeah. to say the very least. I can't yeah. even imagine, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. going through that. But you know, one of the things you said, I could just still see God's hand yeah. in yeah. in the very little things mm -hmm. because, like you said, two armed men mm -hmm. versus one. Mm -hmm. You know, God really just caused confusion yeah. to not let them overpower and the wisdom for you to move that heavy shell mm -hmm. into bleeding mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm you know, is another miracle. And that shelf, you know, many times yeah. we don't know, but God sees ahead. Yeah. And we may want to ask questions like, why didn't he stop it? But instead, we choose to see the fact that he went ahead of us, mm -hmm. you know, to prepare, mm -hmm. to prepare things, not to make it yeah. worse. Mm -hmm. And just your friend, you know, triggering their car alarm, mm -hmm. little wisdom yeah. tips like yeah. that. We need to be security conscious mm -hmm. in the world we live mm -hmm. and just know what to do in times of mm -hmm. danger. So, yeah, that's it. That's a lot to take in. But yeah, what I know that was that's not near the end mm -hmm. of the. Of no, we thought that was the end. No, <laughs> take it from there. <laughs> so um, yeah, so like she said, um, then to the left and and friends came in. Um, and just to mention, so like I said, first confusion God created. The other thing I say is, um, God put friends around mm -hmm. us because my friend and he's a brother actually lives. I mean, is a fence that that separates that separates us. So he was actually behind, but he was awake Not at that time, time to pick yeah. my call, um, and could actually reach get in touch with his, his landlord as well. It was just, um, she called her mom who doesn't live far away from us. And, and you know, we had two gunshots. Um, the first one was a naval from a naval commander that lives down the road who was contacted by the landlord. Our, our friend's landlord. And then the second one was, was her mom's landlord who had the first gunshot and also and, and responded as well. And in fact, her mom says that he began to call the police to let them know this is going on um, in the area. So those testimonies. Anyway, so they took me, they, found, <laughs> they came in and um, found me. So they came, like she said, she heard a familiar voice, but she wasn't convinced that <laughs> it wasn't part of the mm -hmm. gimmick. So she said, mm -hmm. she said, who's that and he said he mentioned his name um 
And then she was like, please come, let me see. <laughs> so she came, then she went out with her son. And then, so they didn't even allow her, they just took her gently, two of them, and took my living nanny as well out of the house. Then she, they asked her where I was and he said she was in the room. So they came into the room and then he called my name and asked me where I was because the room was dark. So I told them I was on the floor, um, but that the light to the room was just behind the, and they turned it on. And then they picked me up and took me, took me out out of the apartment a funny thing again this is god's for me this is just god's grace because they came in i was in a singlet and a boxer and they were like they want to take me they need to rush me to the hospital so i told them that i'm indecent i can't go out <laughs> i can't go to the hospital like this so they were like okay what do you want to say, okay there's a joke i seen <laughs> for me it's just it's just God putting that peace and assurance in my heart. Um, because to be honest, at that point, I felt like oh, if this is the end, this is the end anyway. We, we go home to, to rest. And so, um, but then they rushed me to a hospital in the area and there was no one there. It was literally empty. At that point, I told them, please just take me to, to this hospital, that's where I'm registered. And at least I know it's 24 hours, you definitely, and they rushed me to, to Nisa Premier. Um, in fact, it was later on, they were telling me that because within 20 minutes, by my calculation, we were, we were there and I was calculating how far we would have had to travel. So it was later on, they told me they followed one way to be able to, mm -hmm. to go that far, you know? got to the hospital and within 30 minutes of, of getting there, I felt stronger. So the response from hospital staff was, was, was very quick. They put an IV line and everything, told me what they were going to do and all that. Asked me what had happened and I told them, they said, okay, um, that they needed to take this down for for as part of the administrative processes. But within 30 minutes of getting to the hospital, they had made all the necessary first aid and all that. And I was lying down on my own. From what I observed, um, there wasn't any injury to my abdominal area. So from my chest, no, no, no injuries. So it was around my arms, my back, and in places I didn't even know there were injuries. Um, but within 30 minutes, I was sitting down on my own. Um, they said they had alerted the surgery department. And so a surgeon would come to check me out before the necessary treatment, but that they needed to do an abdominal scan and all that. And, and then they needed to do x-rays. And they were concerned that I might not be able to, to walk to the x-ray um, lab. But within 30 minutes, like I said, um, I was now the one holding my my IV line and the and walked to the um, X-ray lab. Had the X-rays done, they checked my hands. There were no broken bones or anything. Um, checked my chest; everything was fine. So I was I was taken back to emergency. But you know, by morning, um, it felt like I had experienced just minor injuries. Then when the surgeon came and he looked at um, my wounds. I think he counted eleven yeah. stitches. I knew this is eleven another, spots yeah spots all over. Eleven okay. spots all over. You know, I had a cut just behind my neck. I had a cut on my shoulder. I had one behind my thigh. I had one by the armpit. <laughs> my palms were cut. And you know, while he was stitching, he was he would say, "Wow, um, okay, this is not so bad." As, as bad as, as, as we thought. But then he got to the cut just behind my neck and he said that you need to thank God. I said, why? He said, if this cut had gone just a few millimeters deeper, but there was no, he is certain that he said, where do I live? I told him, he said, he is certain that it's my dead body that would have arrived in the hospital because I would have bled out. Um, you know, so that's another testimony that just a few millimeters um, should have been a different story. In fact, this cut that I thought was one that he said, actually, again, this cut missed something vital. 
So, and it didn't even get to your collarbone. So it's like there's a space between your collarbone and it just punctured that, that place. And, and they caught by my armpit that every time I laughed, air would come up. You know, I, I had it caught behind my tie, I didn't know. Um, there was that boy in all this, nothing vital. Mm-hmm. Um, that night I went into surgery and, you know, it was the last thing I remembered. And when I got into the theater, was being told to count one to thirty, and I think the last number I remember I counted was 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 seventeen, and then woke up in recovery with my with my it's my left arm back, my left arm mm-hmm. extended, and so my wife was explaining that there was a cut on this arm, which they thought was just um, surface, but apparently that severed the the nerve from my elbow to my wrist. Um, and so they needed to open up the hand properly to, to do a lot of, a lot of work there. Um, which went successfully. Initially they had told us, Oh, you'll be in hospital for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we were there for, um, four days mm-hmm. or so. And, you know, um, throughout that period, um, the amount of support we received, I mean, that day her colleagues came to visit me. My work colleagues came to visit me. In fact, <laughs> the entire judge, the entire judge mm-hmm. you know, we had to be apologizing to the emergency <laughs> staff. We're well, sorry. <laughs> we didn't plan it. <laughs> It was, uh, it's not intentional. We didn't call people, come, yeah. come, but the number of people, um, family members, um, calls that, you know, it was, it was overwhelming. Again, it just shows, um, God's love and support. Um, and I remember something my boss says, he says, you, you know how lonely you are. Or how supported you are when you fall ill. Um, he's a reverend father, so he says when he falls, ill, that's when he realizes that uh, <laughs> he's a single person mm-hmm. because he doesn't always have that family support. support that you would you would normally have. So to have so many people um, show and offer themselves, you know friends staying in the hospital keeping watch with you so that my wife could go home and and, and rest um, it's just it was just that was wonderful and then that was the same day at same money yeah she was feeling sick so she was suspecting something was happening so she quietly went to 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 see a doctor and then they ran some tests and she came back and told me that she's pregnant. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. This is, <laughs> this is a very good test. <laughs> pause. But before we pause, like I said, we're not even <laughs> done. Mm-hmm. We're not even done. It's a lot in the testimonies. But just in, you know, to use our time properly and to also share as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Let's cut this like part one. <laughs> and in the introduction, something else happened shortly after that. You know, she found out she was pregnant, you were in recovery, and then, you know, another episode mm-hmm. happened. So yeah. just before we end this episode, if you can just tell us what happened, you know, that led to the second stage of the testimony. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um so um so like I said, we left um the hospital within five days and i felt recovery was 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 going fine um and so we went we felt we should go on holiday over the december period we went to miango to relax and all that to calm ourselves down we really did um to miango rest to 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 rest Rest. and and came back in january thinking okay we're fine new year we kick off But then I think it was two weeks into January. Um, in fact, we had found a place to move 
into because all through the robbery incident, we moved in to my to um, my mom's place, who was in living far away from us. We moved in, so we're staying with her, and we needed. We were grateful for all the love, but we could not remain there yeah. indefinitely. So we found a new place and we're preparing to move. It was Friday before Saturday that we would move to our place at the office. I was telling my, my work colleague, I said, I feel like I'm coming down with malaria and I'll probably take this weekend to treat myself because we're also moving house. So I need to, and I had this work activity coming up in two weeks that was very huge and I was preparing for. So I was like, I need to sort out myself this 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 weekend, sort out all of this so that I can focus on office responsibilities. I think that made me laugh was that weekend, the person I was talking to was his birthday. So <laughs> he bought refreshments for us in the office. And then for me, he bought two cans of Monster. He says he knows I like that. He specifically bought this for me. So I told him, you know what? Just keep it for me on Monday. When I come back to the office, yeah. I will take it. And I didn't come back to the office the following Monday because I fell ill. Well, that weekend after we moved in, after we moved um, to this place again, um, my friends helped me do all the work. I told one of my friends, oh, we're moving home. I need to get a truck. He said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I will negotiate everything you need to do, even people that need to help you move. I will do all that. Um, I told my younger brother that I was moving. So he says he'll be available to help us. So when we we're moving, I didn't, I literally did not carry anything. They came with people, again, with my friend and brother that is a neighbor. They moved everything, packed everything, brought it to our house, to this place. And then um, had set everything up. And I just, all I did was to lock the door. Mm -hmm. I told all of them, thank you so much. Let me just pause here and say to everybody that thinks that you can do life alone, you, you're good all by yourself. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. we, God has given us the gift of community support mm -hmm. system. And that's why it's important to be active in your local church. That's one good place to find community, you know. So just, if you don't have community around you, pray for God to send you the gift of the right men. I just felt important to mm -hmm. just... No, I, that. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved everything in here and I locked the door and my friend drove me home. But she had been telling me, go and do malaria test. I said, okay, I will do the test. Let us just pack. Let us sort this out because I don't want to go and be stranded somewhere. Let us sort this out and know that we don't, we are not thinking about moving things around. Um, so after we moved in, he took me to, to a lab and we ran the test. And, you know, I asked them, how will I do if I have malaria? Because is this malaria script? Uh, okay. They said, um, you'll see two lines. I say, oh, like, like the pregnancy, mm -hmm. this scene, I say, see two lines. So I say, okay. So they did it and I was waiting. I didn't see, I saw only one line. So I told them, so I don't have malaria, but I don't feel fine. <laughs> they were like, no, there's another line there. I was like, ah, I can't see the line I'm seeing. Just one line. Where is it? You see, you, you can see something fit. And we were having this back and forth. So I asked my friend, please, okay, come and see. Maybe it's it's the way I'm feeling that. So he looked at it. I said, ah. I said, he can't see anything now. They were like, no, 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 no. Ah. He said, there is nothing here. Okay, if he is sick, if he is sick, I'm not sick. So he's, you know, and so I now told you, you know what, now I'm not feeling fine. Let us just agree that I have malaria prescribe medication, let me take. And they did, they prescribed medication. And I told him, you know, I will treat the malaria. If I don't feel better, then I'll go to the hospital and run proper tests, you know. And that was it. I could not even take the medicine. I took the medicine that night. So this was Saturday, Saturday evening. I took the medicine. I think I took the first dose that night. Um, but by Sunday when I was to take second dose, I took it and threw up. 
I couldn't take anything. Everything, even water, I'll take and, and throw up, you know. And they were like, no, try and, try and take something. Try and, you can't take, try and say, I said, okay, I'll try. I'll take and I'll throw up. So at that point, um, I called my friend again. Um, I've intentionally not mentioned his name, but, but I don't know. Um, so I called my friend Ben and I told him that one, please, um, you know, we went to the lab together. It's not working. I can't take anything. And I told him, Sharon is, is pregnant. I don't want to stress her. We just moved. I don't want to stress her with, with taking me now to the hospital and all that. So please, can you take me to the hospital? Um, let me just run this test. Let me see a, a doctor. And so he did. He took me to the hospital, told the doctor how I was feeling and told her, I didn't think it was malaria, but again, I'm not a doctor. That's why I've come. Um, please check. So she said, okay, she's fine. She'll run the malaria test, but she'll run other things as well, just to be sure that we have a clear picture of what's going on, but that I should take, I should come back the following day though. And then, um, when we came back the following day, so now this is Monday. Um, and at least she will take me this time. Um, or we agreed when I explained everything. So we agreed that she would take me this time, this Monday. Um, so we went Monday morning and when they weighed me, when I took my vitals, I noticed I had lost two kilograms. Um, and then we went to see the doctor. Um, in fact, when we got to the hospital, we met a, a mutual friend, a, a friend of ours who walks there. So we we're talking and he was asking, uh, and I told him how I, he was asking about my injury with the hand. And if that was why I came, I said, no, I came for, I'm not feeling fine. I think I have malaria. So he said, okay. So he walked up with me to see the doctor because she had some things she wanted to, to clear. Um, so before she came in, we walked into the doctor's office and the doctor greeted him, their colleagues. They, so the doctor greeted him and, and the doctor asked for my name and all that and was checking for the results. Then at some point, the doctor, while the doctor was checking all that, I was just in with this friend of mine. Then the doctor says, um, okay, um, are you comfortable discussing your results in front of a third party? Huh. I'm probably, Ah, which kind? Sounds this is the first time I'm hearing this yeah. from a doctor. Then she walked in. So my friend now, I think my friend who is a staff understood, okay, yeah. uh, there's something wrong. So he said, no, let, let me just, let me go and do work. So he left. The doctor asked, I said, are you comfortable discussing your results in front of the third party? I said, doctor, this is my wife. If I can't discuss my results in front of my wife, who do I want to discuss? Mm the results in front of. So now because we had done several tests and the one I remember, malaria, HIV, I said, ah, am I HIV positive? Is that why? Yeah. I said, yes, of course, doctor. He said, okay, no, he just needed to confirm. Then he said, okay, you are negative for malaria, negative for typhoid, negative for, for HIV. I said, ah. so which other one will you? And I said, but you're positive for Hepatitis B. I don't think I even know what hepatitis B is. So because they asked, have you? And then my concern was, ah, hepatitis B. Mm. This woman is pregnant. Um, but we had done screening and, you know, they had screened. I think this was more than 12 weeks now. Mm. So they had done necessary screening. So, ah, where, you understand? So, so at least that was my little consolation that no blood has been screened and you know um, I didn't need to be afraid for her but still it was a concern and for for us anyway went back home and again that night I was so weak I couldn't eat anything um, I mean even water I would throw after a terrible day. Again, I called my friend. I said, please, I can't stress this one. And this was around 10 in the night. Yeah. I told him, I can't stress this lady to come to take me to hospital. 
considering an award, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> you know, um, it's Proverbs <laughs> that says that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. brother, you know. So, and this is someone who has a family mm. for me to to inconvenience him and his family. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me not, let me, he's my friend. I have a friend who has this quote. He said, what are friends for if not for inconveniences? <laughs> but to inconvenience his family yeah, um, and his his wife and his his, his 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 daughters, you know, at that late in the night, for them to be that understanding, you know that they are, they are, they are family to us as well. Mm-hmm. So he came, took me again to the hospital um, when we got back, I told him this time we'll just go straight to emergency. He told me I don't need to go into to see a doctor. So I got to emergency that night. But the doctor who was on call like in the emergency room was like, there's no room. And my friend was starting to get angry. What do you mean by there's no room? The patient has walked into the hospital. It is your duty to take care of that patient. What do you mean by there's no room? So this nurse friend said, no, don't worry about it, I should see that. Because me, I felt, okay, if there's no room, let me go to where they will attend to me. Let me go to in-house where I'll see a doctor and doctor will attend to me. So he was like, no, don't worry, just sit down. You're hungry. Called another nurse, well, a nursing assistant to take my vitals and all that. Then he went back and spoke to the doctor. And so they made bed for me. The same place where I arrived and they put me for my first injury. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor came and was explaining certain things that he has read my records and all that. Um, and that they had already spoken to the consultant that night. So for me, for them to call the consultant that night, it meant they were treating this as very serious mm-hmm. because I thought you could not wait for money mm-hmm. to let the person about to call. So he told me they would be here in the morning to, to see me. Um, and so again, my friend stayed with me until, until morning. Um, and then um, until she came, with, with her mom and then the doctors actually came two 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 doctors came um with their group of of student doctors and were were engaging with us and, and they made but you know that engagement with those doctors was the last thing I remember. Wow. I remember them saying they will have to monitor me and keep me on admission and after that i don't remember anything okay all right so before we end this episode mm-hmm. let's just go back to sharon mm-hmm. just a bit because you are pregnant with all of this going on mm-hmm. and over to you <laughs> <laughs> what what was going on for you in that period as we wrap up this episode um it was again like each time he speaks i'm trying to it's almost like a dream it's almost like Mm -hmm. narrating something that happened in a distant past but i know at that time a lot was going on you know we're trying to move house we couldn't afford to go back into what you know chaos we you know came out of so in all of that again there was the stress of that and then i was also trying to work but thankfully the pregnancy in the very you know early um, weeks was not the problematic one so i would had peace in that one it was a blessing huge one so at least i was able to eat and everything but i I became more concerned about him because Um, and then when we got to the hospital, we found out what the results were like. The first thing I started thinking, okay, how can we get past this? Mm. Because the first, I'm always thinking of solutions. It's not the problem that is my problem. It is the you? solution. What next? Yeah. And I scanned around, okay, I'm next. I'm the closest to him. So I need to know, am I okay? Is the baby okay? Though I had tests done previously, but I needed to check again. And our son, okay, he's always, he's a daddy's boy. He's always holding on to his daddy for anything. I started thinking, okay, could he also be in danger for this thing? So it was also trying to ensure that we as a family, we were safe and we could actually, again, minimize the risk and know that, okay, we're focusing on getting my husband back. Um, 
So in that time, we had to run all the tests, run everything. And I would say God was just through it all because when I conducted the test eventually for hepatitis, which I had to do, um, we then discovered that my body apparently had created its own, you know, antibody or whatever it was. So a point, apparently at some point, I must have, con you know, contacted it, but that was just it. I couldn't, when the doctor was saying, like, okay, that's, I, I didn't even know what to think of it, but I just said it could just have been good. Yeah. So eventually our son as well, we discovered he too was fine because he had taken the earlier, um, you know, Excellent. doses for immunization as a child and he was okay. My mom too, was fine. No, everybody was okay because we were in her home. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we're going to pause here mm -hmm. and then come back. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys have heard everything so mm -hmm. far. It's been such a time. Mm -hmm. um, so we're stopping here. Ezra doesn't know what's going on. That's the last thing he remembers. Sharon is still pregnant and there is still more to come, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, so we come your way in the next episode, finalizing the testimony at this part of the Ezra Majaya family. Thank you for joining us on the world. See you in the next episode. I climb to the highest mountain.